You know, this whole negotiation reminded me of my personal situation. When I went in to negotiate my plea, I knew I had leverage. And the reason I had leverage is because I beat the government five times. And you know, again, in my negotiation guide, it's something that I stress to try to go in there with leverage. Be prepared. Know what you have that they want that you can use to your benefit. Leverage, it's so important in negotiation. So click on below, get my free guide. Not gonna cost you anything. I think there's a lot of things in there that are gonna benefit you. Welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. Hope everybody's doing well. All is good on this end. Praise God for that. And you know, I love movies. We do our Mob Movie Monday and I review movies and I give you my take on it, my perspective. We've been doing a lot of mob movies, but we've done, you know, movies of all kinds. But one of my favorites is American Gangster. And there's a scene in there that just really hit home for me. You know, I've created this negotiation guide. And really, because I want to give you all the benefit of my experience on the street, the many sit downs I've sat in on, the many negotiations I had, some very serious, others a little bit light, some in business, some for somebody's life, a lot of stuff. So we created this negotiation guide. I want you all to get the benefit of that. Click on the link below. It's a free guide, free resource for you, and I think it'll be very, very helpful. And one of the scenes in American Gangster really relates to some of the principles and some of the techniques that I give you in this negotiation guide. So let me set it up for you. Denzel Washington, who plays Frank Lucas, you know his story, drug dealer in Harlem. He finally gets arrested after years of dealing drugs. And Russell Crowe is the honest cop that's arrested him. So now they're sitting down at the table and they're gonna have a pretty high stakes negotiation. And what's the bottom line here? Frank Lucas thinks he's, you know, he's got leverage. He believes he does because he's got money and he's gonna make an offer to Russell Crowe for money and he thinks he's gonna buy his way out of this situation. That's how I'm seeing this. Russell Crowe, on the other hand, he's an honest cop and he knows what he's got. He's got an arrest on, on Frank Lucas and he believes that he's got the goods on him, that he's got the evidence to convict him, but he wants something out of him. What does Russell Crowe want out of this? He wants cooperation, don't they always? But he doesn't want it against the guys on the street. That's not really his concern. He wants Frank Lucas to cooperate against the corrupt, dishonest cops. He knows who they are. They've abused him to a certain respect. He's an honest guy. He doesn't like what's going on. And he knows Frank Lucas can be very helpful in that regard. And that's what the negotiation is all about. He came in well prepared. Lucas thought he was well prepared. He thought he had leverage because he always bought his way out of everything. Cops are illegitimate, you know, they're corrupt. And yeah, I'm gonna buy my way out of this. That's what he thought. But you know what? There are some honest police out there. The most of them are honest. So this negotiation goes back and forth and a couple of things throughout kind of related to me in a way, and I'll tell you why. Frank Lucas is saying, That's pretty good, but that's why we go to court, isn't it, Richie? Because I got witnesses too. I got celebrities, I got sports figures, I got Harlem, Richie. I took care of Harlem, so Harlem's going to take care of me, you can believe that. And I'll never forget, you know, Russell Crowe says to him, not this time. I got a line of people wanting to testify against you that stretches out the door and around the block. I got the Mazzano crime family, remember those boys? Apart from the fact that they hate you personally, they hate what you represent. A black businessman like you, you represent progress kind of progress that's going to see them lose a lot of money. With you out of the way, everything can return to normal. You know, this whole negotiation reminded me of my personal situation. When I went in to negotiate my plea, I knew I had leverage. And the reason I had leverage is because I beat the government five times. They brought five cases against me a racketeering case and four other state cases. And so I knew I had leverage because they really wanted a conviction on me. So I knew I had a certain amount of leverage to make the kind of deal that I wanted. 
and to get what I wanted out of it. Frank Lucas didn't have that leverage. I did, and ultimately I did wind up with a 10-year prison sentence, $15 million restitution. But at the time, 10 years, you could still make parole. After 40 months, you were eligible for parole. So I knew maybe I had a shot at getting out at 40 months. And first time around, I got out at 42 months. I violated, went back, you know the story there, but I had leverage. Frank Lucas didn't really have any leverage. And then Russell Crowe lays something on him when he says to him, I'm not really caring about the guys on the street. I want the cops. I want the corrupt cops. Well, Denzel kind of sits back and, you know, he, he relates things to his childhood. You know, he says, look, all I did when I was a kid, you know, I saw those cops abusing my family, my brother. You know, he said, I never liked them, and I saw what they did, and I knew they were corrupt back then. So he was saying, okay, you know what? If you're going after the cops, the corrupt cops, they deserve it. I'll be your man. I'll testify. That's what kind of swayed it to him. And you know what? I related to that also because when I grew up, you know, cops for me were the enemy. They are always coming after my family, my father, friends of my dad's, and I looked at them as the enemy. So I kind of understood and related to what Denzel was thinking at that point in time. So anyhow, this goes on and on, and Denzel does agree to cooperate. Eventually he does. He does get his time cut on this. And Russell Crowe, who had all the leverage, he won the sit-down, no doubt about it. And you know, again, in my negotiation guide, it's something that I stress to try to go in there with leverage. Be prepared. Know what you have that they want that you can use to your benefit. Leverage. It's so important in negotiation. So click on below. Get my free guide. Not going to cost you anything. I think there's a lot of things in there that are going to benefit you. Negotiation. And then look into my inner circle because it's content like this that we keep putting in there. And so many people are benefiting by it. And so many people are signing up on a daily basis. And we continue to put content in there, not only on negotiation, but on leadership, on life skills. It's very, very important stuff. And we work hard. We want you to have the benefit of my my experience, my years of knowledge on the street, and my years of knowledge afterward. You know, hope you enjoyed this. It was a great clip. Great movie, by the way. Didn't review the whole movie today. I think I did it in the past. Look up my review. It was great on this one. Denzel is terrific. Everything that he does. If you haven't seen the movie Fences, I tell you to go watch it. A brilliant performance by him and Viola. I forget her last name, but she was terrific. Terrific movie. Unbelievable. Denzel Washington up on top of one, some of the best in the business, no doubt about it. So, Hope you enjoyed it. That's it for today. How do I always leave you? Same way. Be safe. Be healthy. I mean this from my heart. God bless you all. And yes, I will see you next time. Take care.